people talk of different leadership styles there are certain prerequisites for all good leaders so one is there is something called authentic leadership authentic authenticity only comes based on integrity means you walk your talk second source of power is called personality power have you seen there is something called charismatic personalities yes, sir, definitely. that's like a film hero and third is power that is based on principles in life principal power Good afternoon sir it's a pleasure meeting you thank you <laughs> so i am anna chohan from jim skalka ji and i wanted to ask you this one question that i'm also a leader and i'm growing right so i'm trying to figure out my leadership style so i need to understand how to maintain a balance while keeping it light like airy for the people who are under me while also making sure that all the tasks are achieved efficiently so what do you think about it how can i develop that well let me explain to you people talk of different leadership styles some are domineering some are leading by from the front some talk leading from behind and so on but at the same time there are certain prerequisites for all good leaders all good leaders yes, one whatever you do you must believe in it strongly you must walk your talk it is not something that you put on a mask and display elsewhere behave differently that's not it so one is there is something called authentic leadership authentic authenticity only comes based on integrity means you walk your talk so it is not that uh, you are saying something behaving differently it won't work you will not be a good leader anywhere and tell me would you trust a person who says one thing behave differently no sir no you will never trust them so would you follow them would they be a good leader answer is no so there are certain prerequisites that are required and whatever you do you have to have belief and conviction in that so it must come from inside not only from outside so that is what people start following and uh, i think uh, if you look at the life histories of most good leaders whether it's gandhi martin luther king lincoln anywhere you find it is not their good looks or anything yes. but there are three kinds of leaders in fact what is a source of power for a good leader one kind of leader gets power from position and titles give power see those who get power from positions and titles you take away the title and the power goes down goes down yes sir so there's a nice saying which says positions and titles give you authority and authority gives you power but only good behavior gives respect that's one source of power and a good leader but two second source of power is called personality power have you seen there's something called charismatic personalities yes sir definitely that's like a film hero they razzle dazzle you for some time and uh, and then blind you and then when you wake up the hero does look good anymore yes, now let me explain to you personality is important in leadership it is because personality opens the doors definitely but if you have personality no character the door opens and then it closes closes so keep in mind personality opens the door and character keeps it open but the third major leadership quality comes in as one is position power two personality power and third is power that is based on principles in life principle power if you look at life histories of gandhi martin luther king lincoln they all got power from principles some of these leaders were fat they were bald i mean they were all different kinds yes, it was not their looks but they all got power from principles in life and your winning combination is Second personality and, and principle put together that's really the answer
Clarifies? Yes, sir. Covers? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so, uh, I also wanted to ask, as a leader in a space like college, right? So, I get a lot of opinions, a lot of criticism. So, how do I take that criticism, alter myself while also being true to myself, like keeping true to myself? Okay, one <clears throat> thing I can say to you is, criticism is normal and natural. Even when we are growing up in the house, don't our parents criticize when we do something wrong? Do they remain silent? No. No. So therefore, criticism is okay. And keep in mind, we are criticized <coughs> for two reasons. Sometimes justifiably and sometimes unjustifiably. Now, unjustified criticism comes also for two, two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, either out of ignorance. See, you don't have the facts right, so you criticize me. Yes. This is easy to handle. I get the facts to your attention, the criticism goes away automatically. Yes. This is one kind of criticism. But there's a second kind of unjustified criticism comes in out of jealousy. Yes, sir. Exactly. You want to be where I am, but you are not, or you cannot be. So instead of appreciating me, you start firing at me, you're shooting at me, you want to pull me down. This is a second kind of unjustified criticism. Unjustified criticism that comes out of jealousy, take it as a disguised compliment. Okay? Yes, sir. But if it is justified, then I'll share with you quick short ways how to accept and receive constructive criticism. One, take it graciously, not grudgingly. Means, constructive criticism should make a person better, not bitter. Yes. Number two, if it makes sense, evaluate it, then implement it. And three, don't be defensive. If you realize your mistake, accept it immediately and emphatically. Don't be defensive. Look, if you gave me constructive criticism and I realize my mistake, if I defend myself, my mistake, it would irritate you even more. Yes. And in future, you'll stop giving me constructive criticism. But if I accept it immediately and I say, I'm sorry, I apologize, I realize my mistake, I'm glad that you brought it to my attention, I won't do it again. Now, what more do you have to say? It's all over. See, you were ready to fight. What did I do? I surrendered. I surrendered. I realized my mistake. I'm not being defensive anymore. But keep in mind, this kind of a thing will only work if you are sincere and honest. If you use this kind of a situation, like, I'm sorry, I accept my mistake, as a strategy, it will only work once. That is crooked. Yes. That is dishonest. So I accept my mistake. And lastly, when someone gives you constructive criticism, always thank them for criticizing you. Why? It shows that they care. If they didn't care, why would they criticize you? In a constructive manner. There's a nice saying which says, your complaining customer is your best customer. Why? Because they help us grow. That they help you grow. Yes. Because if you are making a mistake to one person, you might be making the same mistake to 500 other people yes. who might stop doing business with you without complaining. And this person gives you a second chance to correct and retain him. So keep in mind, constructive criticism, people who are positive, they actually invite. Yes. I know a person who goes out, they worked in a company and uh, within a month they came back and asked their boss, tell me, what are the things you find I'm doing positive and please tell me what are the areas I can improve? Mm -hmm. It's a very positive way to invite uh, constructive, constructive criticism. Yes. That's how we grow. Got it? Yes, sir. Remember, winners don't do different things. They yes. do things different differently. Case. Give me a high five. Folks, if you like, please subscribe and follow.